Council to order. It's Tuesday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. Please rise for the invocation given by Councilwoman Sarah Lucido. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, on behalf of all those gathered here today, we ask for your continued blessing. We ask for your guidance as we work through our agenda. We ask that you can continue to help us to understand each other as we work to find fair solutions to the issues that face our city. Thank you for the blessings and for your guidance. We look forward to a great summer in our city, and we ask that you keep our residents safe. It is in your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonaco? Here. Councilperson Lucido? Here. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Here. Councilperson Marion? Here. And Mayor Pixley? Here. And with that, we'll open to the first hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard at this time? Does anyone wish to be heard? Anyone? Seeing none, first hearing of the public is closed. Move on to approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of April 18th. We have Mayor. a motion. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> Jumping the gun. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of April 18th, 2017. Support. Move support. Any corrections? Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonaco? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. We have no scheduled hearings, no unfinished business. We'll move on to reports from administration. Start with our city manager, Mr. Deschain. The report for council tonight that uh, involves public awareness uh, should be the Gratiot construction project beginning. The, um, as you may have noted in my brief of this past week, I did indicate we've had um, significant conversation with MDOT, their representatives, Department of Transportation for everybody, regarding our schedule of two things, Memorial Day Parade, which has been approved and permitted, as well as the uh, Gratiot Cruise. Uh, June, the week of the cruise, June 11th through the 17th. Um, everybody up to deputy director has assured us they're very aware of the need to have it um, in excellent condition, to have the work uh, temporary halted during these periods, and to have it not only passable by vehicles, but by people and pedestrians on foot, and not in a way that there's sawhorses, orange barrels, or backhoes uh, setting around. So. I don't know what else we can do to be assured and assure people they, they have planned it as, as requested. Uh, they have indicated that's in their contracts and there's significant penalties to the contractors uh, for a failure to comply. Uh, that being said, I re reinforced again with them that this is kind of like, you know, it's, it's like a nuclear strike. We don't get to just do it again if we were wrong the first time. So um, there is a, a presence of the consulting engineer on site, uh, Team Daly. Uh, they're coordinating with Mr. Pry in the field for activities. Uh, we have done our very best to uh, in, enforce all of our rights under the permit we hold and to work with the contractor, and we'll keep you apprised if anything changes. But right now, uh, this, and you will see signs, you will see notices. Up on Gratiot, uh, we are aware of those, and uh, we are working daily with those people to ensure that they comply with what they say they're going to do. Um, in addition, they had indicated they'd be notifying our businesses uh, by mail. I do not know if that's happened or flyers. Um, we would making some further inquiries of that in the upcoming weeks, but the MDOT original approved plan indicated that there would be sending some flyers to businesses um, indicating to them what was taking place on Gratiot and there would be some interruptions throughout until August or September when the entire project's done from time to time. So that's where we are right now. That's all the report I had, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any questions for the city manager? <clears throat> Curiosity item, do you know who the paving company is? Yes, it's Ajax, <laughs> not AIS, John, and I know why you're acquir acquir inquiring. I so. just had to ask. I know you did. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, let's move on to our finance director, Mr. Blum. Oh, yes, Madam Mayor and Council, uh, as mentioned at the last meeting, um, 
The water bills will be out in the mail. If not already today, it'll be tomorrow or the next day, and those bills need to be paid by May 21st to keep it off of your summer taxes. So pay them up. And that's all I got. Thank you. Any questions for the finance director? I just got one question on the procedure on developing the, what goes in the description heading. And I know we've kind of beat that around that you're limited on how much you can put in there because of the size. But what I'm kind of con concerned is, is the confusion that came about because the entry was just totally wrong. And how is that determined when they, what documentation do they have to their readily available when they're making this entry to try and get it right? Or yeah. how do they, what's the process here? Um, each department uh, creates their own requisitions, purchase orders. Um, we try to use those descriptions as best as possible, so it depends on what is put in there at the initial stage. If that description isn't sufficient, then the accounts payable clerk will go to the invoice itself. You're talking about the door, I assume. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's the wrong building. Um, yeah, and uh, the invoice, it wasn't the requisition. The actual invoice said fire department, <laughs> and we believe it was the uh, architectural firm because that's the same company that did some renovation at the fire station, and they just put the wrong description on the invoice. Okay. All right, kind of answers it, but it just seems Yeah, like it's, sometimes that happens. Okay. Anything else? No. Nope. Right. Let's move on to the city attorney. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, members Mr. of council. Robert. Thank you. Um, council's in receipt of uh, our firm's monthly uh, status report. I included with uh, the status report the scheduling order, uh, which was issued uh, by the uh, court regarding the uh, Department of Justice case. Uh, that scheduling order was entered uh, last week, I believe. Uh, city administration had indicated that uh, it would be. Uh, uh, placing that on the website for the public to uh, review. Uh, that scheduling order contains all of the deadlines uh, related to that case, uh, when discovery has to be completed, when wit witness lists need to be exchanged, uh, when experts need to be uh, uh, indicated. So um, again, uh, that will be, uh, I believe, posted on the, uh, the website. And uh, I had one follow-up, too, to the, uh, the status report. Um, I did receive the reports and orders for the February uh, dangerous building hearings. Um, uh, Jim McGrail did provide those to our office, and I have prepared uh, letters to all the interested parties so they will know uh, what uh, Mr. McGrail ordered, along with a copy of the report and order. And uh, the, um, uh, the hearings from November, uh, those will need to be rescheduled, as I indicated in my report. And uh, Linda McGrail, uh, she will be acting as the uh, city's uh, new uh, hearing officer from this point forward. So. I'm happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Okay, all right, thank you. Anything? No. <clears throat> all right, we'll move on to new business. We'll start with item A, the renewal of the workers' comp third party administration services agreement. Um, Mr. Plum, did you wanna say anything about this? Um, the only thing I wanted to highlight <clears throat> is the, um, the premium is coming in higher than we had budgeted. Um, the factor that is used based on the experience of the city uh, jumped significantly and um, we had anticipated an increase just not as much as came in. Um, we have had a, um, a number of retirees that have had continuing surgeries because workers comp is responsible for the medical <clears throat> until the, the day that person dies. Um, so we've had some knee replacements and th stuff from uh, on the job injuries years ago. In addition to some of the current employees, we've had quite a few uh, shoulder injuries that are leading to surgeries, which is kind of unusual. Um, normally we get a little injury and they go do some rehab and they disappear, but uh, uh, we have had two already this year, a third scheduled and another one that is going in for a third opinion before they cut into them. So it's just been kind of an odd year. But um, that, that was really all. So these will be in next year's budget, right? <coughs> so we can still adjust for that because we haven't approved it. Correct. Yet. Yeah, when we get it to our, our later in the month meetings on the budget, we can adjust for that. Okay. On the more positive note, the, the, the lead fund continues to perform well, and there is a significant credit, dividend credit here. And we've had a number of years of very positive experiences where mm -hmm. it's been larger because of our experience. Uh, so 
in the insurance business, you look at it over five years and uh, still extremely positive overall. And uh, Mr. Blum said, sometimes these things do happen. So we need a motion on this. Correct. Okay. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the renewal of workers' compensation third-party administration services to the Michigan Municipal League Workers' Compensation Fund at a new cost of $277,362 for the period of July 1, 2017 to June 30, 2018. Support. support. Any questions, further questions? Mm -mm. Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Item B is the purchase of the Pitney Bowes mail machine. Madam Mayor, I make a motion to approve the purchase of a Pitney Bowes mail machine in the amount of $12,439.16 based on the spec sheet provided. Support. Move support. Any questions? Please call the roll. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Item C is resolution number 1832, which is M. Contract. 175174 for construction of um, pedestrian refuge islands. Can we get a motion to that effect? Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 1832, approving MDOT contract number 17 5174 uh, for the con uh, construction of pedestrian refuge islands at Gratia Avenue and Virginia Avenue intersection, authorized city manager to execute. All necessary documents related to the contract. Support. Who support? <coughs> Please call the roll. Whoop, I got a discussion on that. I just want to make an observation, just so that the public knows, it doesn't say nine mile in any document I received. There's ten pages of state M dot specifications. The word nine mile does not appear in it. How they do that and not spec that is beyond me. So let's hope they pick the right part of Gratiot when they decide to do that. But for everybody to know, they're planning the island on Nine Mile, just west of Gratiot at that intersection, and then east of Gratiot on Nine Mile at that intersection, and then also down at Virginia. There'll actually be three, if I stand correct. And when is the construction going to be happening? It'll actually be early next year in the year 2018 cycle. Was that map in our last agenda packet or was that separate? Oh, uh, I think uh, it was in the so prior, yeah, the prior package. Last pad, yeah. last week, mm -hmm. yeah. last meeting. Okay. Be, the you only thing attach, that maybe you want to just attach that by reference. I, I'm sure they're not going to get lost, but uh, <laughs> uh, the specifications are built around that structure, but maybe why don't you just add to the resolution per the attached, also per the attached, uh, Oh, and I just meant for the public yeah. too, but that's yeah. I think making the length of the one on the west side as long as they do is a good idea because everybody that gets off the bus on nine mile on Gratiot takes a beeline due south to the bus station on nine mile. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately it's on a diagonal and everybody crosses right in the middle and hopefully that's going to give them some place to stand for a while from a little more protected and not get hit however it would be nice if they used the crosswalk but i thank you <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and we do support. please call the roll council member kleinfeld yes council member marion yes mayor pixley yes council member de monaco Yes. Council yes. Member Lucido. Yes. And we I, turned around on that. Yeah, I Mr. think I, I seconded it. Cardi had the second. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I had the third. <laughs> and I will I will note it as I will note it as such. All right, we have a number of appointments to our various commissions and we'll start with Mr. Duchesne who has two appointments to the DDA. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh I would like to appoint uh, Teresa M. Hing uh, to the DDA as the first appointment. She is the Chief Executive Officer of the East Point Community Credit Union. Uh, they are in the downtown area on Gratiot. Uh, she belongs to the Chamber of Commerce, the East Point Kiwanis Club, 
and her three children have graduated for East Detroit High School. Um, the second person I'd like to uh, appoint is Patrick Wolf, local business person. He's also on the board of directors of the East Point Roseville Chamber of Commerce and active in the community. And I think both of these parties will provide additional insight and assistance in our uh, meeting our DDA goals. That's good to me. All right. So the motion is here. Um, and then you also have three people that are reappointments for terms. I'm sorry. Yes, I do. I don't um, I can comment on the, the additional. Uh, Barry and, and Guardio, uh, maybe just a comment on that, is a CPA. Uh, also functioning in the downtown area, has been on the D development authority for a new number of years. Uh, Mr. Patrick Mills is our most recent, uh, one of our more recent members who actually came when we had the night a few years ago of trying to gather interest in boards and commissions. Um, he is, uh, works in financial services uh, and uh, has been a, a, a very positive uh, thought and forward thinking person on the board. And Joseph Solomon, whose reputation precedes him, who'd been around here before there was uh, dirt. And uh, Joe has been with the authority for, yeah, I think from its, actually from when it started. Almost. No, most close. Mm -hmm. And he uh, is right across and waves at me every day over in UPS in the building across. Mm -hmm. So he is uh, in the authority also. Thank you. So can we get a motion from the council to approve the appointments? Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to appoint Teresa Hing and Patrick Wolf and to reappoint Patrick and Guardio our Perry and Guardio, Patrick Mills, and Joseph Solomon to the Downtown Development Authority Board with the terms to expire September 1st, 2021. Support? Move and support. Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. On the next appointments are mayor appointments um, with council approval. So the first one is to appoint Andrew Boyer, who's here tonight, who looks different than he did the last time he was here. And the second one to beautification would be Lynn Salafia, and I don't think she's here. Um, and does, did I say that name right? Um, she came to adopt a garden. And she did, I yes. think we all met her yeah. that day. Yeah. Um, and that would be with a term to expire in December of 2020. So can I have a motion to that effect? Madam Mayor. Oh. Sorry. I was okay. going to suggest Councilwoman Lucido. So. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to appoint Andrew Boyer and Lynn uh, Salafia to the Beautification Commission with terms to expire December 31st, 2020. Support. <laughs> Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. And then we needed um, three people, if you'll remember, the elected officials commission wasn't able to meet because um, three people had moved away and one person's term expired in April. So um, we had three new people, um, Walter Jakubiak, who's in the back of the room, um, Diane Williams, and the next one is um, Sonny Eplin. His real name is Ewell Eplin. So um, Sonny is the past president of the Lions, and Walter, there's no introduction needed for him. And um, Diane Williams um, has been very active um, throughout the city with the African-American population. I don't know if you've met her or not. Um, her husband is on the East Point Roseville Chamber of Commerce as well, so she's been really active. So I would like um, a council approval or motion by council to approve those appointments. Madam Mayor, I'll make a, a motion to appoint Diane Williams, Ewell Eplins, Walter Jakubiak, and reappoint Christine Lenito to the elected board of officials, the elected officials compensation commission with a term to expire April 1st, 2024. Support. Isn't that amazing? It's a seven year appointment. <laughs> that is the longest appointment we have. And you know why? They only meet once every two years. They don't even meet every year. That's, that's a 
quite a year, 2024. <laughs> Just seems like a long time. Please call the roll. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. And our last item is payroll and bills. Are we in a motion? Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve payment of the bills in the amount of $2,107,667.19. Uh, support. We would support it. Any more questions? I know a number of questions were answered. Anything else? Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. And with that, we'll move to the second hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard at this time? Does anyone wish to be heard? Anyone? All right, seeing none, that second hearing of the public is closed. We'll move to mayor and <coughs> council reports. We'll start with Mr. DeMonico. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just real quick, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out for Earth Day. We did have uh, 19 volunteers, 20 if we count Bill Driscoll for coming out and taking some pictures of us. We've got Andy Boyer out in the audience. I'd like to thank for pushing the Beautification Commission to do this. And uh, I plan on, and I know he plans on doing it every year, so that'll be good. And obviously he's officially part of the Beautification Commission now. Uh, I'd like to thank Pastor Collins again for allowing us to use his church for lunch after, after the cleanup we eat up. And then Mary Demsich, of course, helped out, provided um, some gloves and all that for us to use that day. And then Paul, Paul and Martha from the commission were also there. And then Councilman Kleinfeld came out. So, but 19, I thought that was pretty good for how quick we put that together. And then we had the memorial tree ceremony also. That was really nice. Again, I think the biggest crowd I've ever, ever seen. There were like 70 people there or something. I mean, this whole chamber was definitely full and there were people out in the hallway. Did the Odd Fellows come? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure most, <laughs> most of the people were there with the Odd Fellows because then the Odd Fellows actually invited us over next door afterwards. And that was really nice. Had food and all that. And I know a lot of folks went and visited their trees and um, and we cleaned our, our bed after, well, I can't say we, I, I didn't help, but, <laughs> uh, the beautification commission beds cleaner now. And, um, and it's my wife, Alyssa's birthday on Thursday and happy mother's day, uh, Mayor Pixley and <laughs> councilwoman Lucido. It's, uh, about two weeks away, but a couple days before our next meeting. So that's all I had. Thank you. And Mr. Marion. Uh, just a quick talk about the my dog's uh, appreciation day this past Saturday. We had a good turnout. At one point, I think we had about 15 dogs in the park at one time. Got a little crazy a couple times because you get a couple of them get a little social and a couple of them don't want to be so social, but it still worked out real well. Uh, we're kind of bumping elbows with a lot of the members trying to recruit some new board members. Uh, just a reminder, our meeting's coming up this Monday, 7 o'clock at Rare. Uh, we're, we're hoping in some people of interest uh, would hear this and, as a reminder, show up for the meeting uh, to sit down and talk with us and uh, possibly uh, apply for a position on, on the board. And uh, that's all I got. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Kleinfeld. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to mention uh, for council and people at home, um, thank you, Mayor Pixley. She gave me the information for the student activities director. I've been in contact with her and uh, also spoke to Steve about it. Um, our goal is to have some students shadow on a, at our meeting on the 16th and then help chair follow the meeting after that. Um, I, believe, I believe I'll be talking to Stephanie a bit more tomorrow and then I'll just keep updating council. And great. Just wanted to let you guys know. Sounds great. Um, the only thing I have this evening is that um, this weekend at the library, they are having their book and media sale. That's Saturday, May 6th from 12.30 to 4.30, and also on Monday, May 8th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I would like to thank uh, everyone that signed up to join the commission. Um, it is really greatly appreciated. It's uh, a nice thing to donate your time to the city, and it's definitely uh, well appreciated. So thank you. All right. 
Um, I don't have too much on the calendar. I'm really sorry that I missed the tree ceremony. I um, was a judge in a Michigan um, history um, contest, and I've signed up for that a year ahead of time, so it's impossible when I find out the, you know, a couple weeks before. So that's why I wasn't there. But I've always found the memorial tree ceremony to be one of the nicest. And then the Odd Fellows seem to recognize all of their um, past members every two years. And so every two years we have a giant crowd that comes. But it's a, a really neat thing, I, I think, for the Odd Fellows to be so active and participate so much. And I did make it to cleaning, but I was a few minutes late. Somebody snagged me and talked to me while I was at Ann Dairy, so there I was in my blue jeans and everything, and I got there and I saw all of you divided on both sides and going in both directions, so I figured it looks like they got lots of people, so I'm just not gonna go. <laughs> I've done more than enough. Um, so I was glad that it all worked out over there. Um, it worked out with the food and everything, so that sounds really good. Um, all right, and I don't have anything else going on um, this week, um, but I did wanna tell council I do have your pictures from the cruise, and I think the city's going to love them when they see them in the cruise book. So I will have copies for all of you um, so you can see them before we put them in the program book. But they look good. And we're waiting. Um, the poor, poor city employees, they're still trying to find a car. I guess we've got three cars lined up, and this idea that somebody came up with, with all these volunteers who are now going to participate. We're going to try to take it out here in the, the, the plaza, so we're hoping it all comes together. we got volunteers who just have to pick the right day. That comes up next week, so How are you going to work. drive them on the grass, are you? How are you going yeah, to Yeah, I'm going to park them right across the grass. On, some people have. I mean, we follow the same path. No, we'll be on the concrete. <laughs> I don't think these people with cars would let us drive them on grass, do they? I don't know. Mm -mm. So plans are really coming along for the cruise. If anybody um, wants to register their car or sign up for a, um, a lane pass, you can do that now. Um, the, the ads for the program book are all closed. The program book is filled. But one of the most exciting things is we're doing a Hudson Packard show on um, Saturday on cruise day. And that's going to be over on Ethlin Court. And um, Mr. Um, John Marion has been up at Stalls, and Stalls has agreed to bring a number of cars down, so that's very exciting because they have some of the nicest Hudson cars up there, so I'm very excited to see that. And then um, also, I was talking with um, um, Ken Pointer, the mayor of um, Harper Woods, and the Hudson Club is meeting over in Harper Woods this week, so there's nine Hudsons that will be here from there. So I think that's um, the cruise is going to be really good this year. We've got some nice vendors. I was just expressing an interest in getting Mr. Boyer to bring out some food as well. So I, I think the cruise is going to be fun. All we have to do is make sure that grass at rocks and hills. <laughs> so um, that's it for now. So I would entertain a motion to go into closed session. Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to go into closed session uh, for a collective bargaining strategy pursuant to MCL 15.268C. Support. We would support. Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Go into closed session in.